Uh, you actually bring up a really in interesting question because, um, and there's also something that's uh, been pretty hotly debated uh, in terms of whether you should use a, a FAT function and do your own routing, uh, or do you have uh, one function per endpoint method? And I'm definitely in the second camp because it gives you better, I guess, uh, security posture, be able to uh, be able to have a tailored IAM roles for each function. And also, uh, if you've got a mix of different workloads and uh, dependencies, uh, it also helps you reduce the co-start uh, overhead for each function. If, uh, say, you're doing both uh, server-side rendering and some REST uh, API stuff in the same API, you don't have to load the React uh, dependency for the functions and endpoints that are just returning some you know, data from DynamDB in REST. Uh, but I understand there's a lot of customers who want to migrate from existing applications that's uh, just one big Express JS app uh, to Lambda to get some of the benefits. Uh, you don't want to force them to have to re uh, restructure and rewrite the entire application. So having that fat function being able to run Express JS inside Lambda is useful. Um, but um, sounds like you actually you know, quite like the idea of having fat functions. Uh, can you maybe talk us through you know, your thoughts on that? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this is like such a common discussion that we um, we documented at, at least partially because I don't want power to documentation, at least in this form. We have plans for something else, but not now, <laughs> not, not ready to share um, that if you go to the event handler documentation, there's something called considerations, which is not trying to say one is better than the other, but trying to give you a more uh, honest opinion, I suppose. Like power tools, we are very opinionated. Otherwise, we'd have too many different ways <laughs> of configuring something. And we are we are writing it down on some of the common trade-offs uh, worth knowing when you're choosing a monolithic approach or a micro-function sync responsibility. My take on this is it has changed over the years. When I started as a serverless uh, a specialist, uh, my goal was, look, this is all about having a single function handling just what it needs to be exactly in the exactly same set of permissions and your gold. In theory, that works great. Uh, in practice, it starts to become an issue as soon as you, you have more people working on it and depending on the language you have and depending on the build setup you have, framework you have. One of the common challenges for, uh, for serverless and one of the reasons I wanted to build power tools is that I I ended up uh, making a mistake on saying this is the serverless way that you should build applications. And I initially used to think that people building applications for serverless were all developers. And there's a huge uh, <laughs> bridge that we still have to construct to meet these people where they are with their knowledge. And what you ended up finding with this micro versus monolithic, it's not a good debate in the sense of just showing this is the best way or the other. Because people tend to start with one and then eventually gravitate to another one and then eventually have a blend approach. What do I mean by this? I would take a customer that uses Power Tools that has a few million functions in in that in, in multiple, multiple so many accounts, and what happens is that the fat function is it's a great one to start if you are actually building, like you said, you're migrating for an existing application, you already have all the knowledge and you migrate and eventually you start breaking away. First, make it work. The, the other one is eventually they start breaking it, they get into different functions and you get another problem, which is an operational issue where you have hundreds or thousands of Lambda functions and some of it has a licensing uh, issue, not from Lambda or from AWS, but you might be using a provider that would charge you per unique Lambda function, for instance, you have something installed. So now what your architecture design that looks fantastic on a slide becomes a bit of a cost issue as well and you have to rethink that model. That's why saying the serverless way is you have a serverless purpose function it becomes a bit more are problematic and the context is always required. So this customer, or not only this, but many others, you go from a monolithic function, typically in two occasions, the one that I just mentioned, you are migrating from something you already now, or different from Node.js, Python doesn't have this great bundling or the uh, tree shake that you have uh, where you can have different files and eventually just bundle into one. In Python, you would have the concept of the namespaces and the challenge of the way you build Python applications, it's very different the way you build a Lambda function. 
because the way you, the import system works and it's always messy, especially when you use, a, let's say, some CLI to build your function. And then you have to have additional customizations in your project setup for your tasks to be able to discover everything and to work locally and to work in Lambda. So that little um, issue that you end up bumping into makes people to know, you know what, I will just have a single function with everything because it makes my development productivity much faster. And then eventually they start breaking into, I'm going to use a layers for shared code. I'm going to be using here or there. So it's a, um, it's a combination of these two. Okay, so that's some, those are some great points. And uh, especially on the one about having to structure a function because of uh, certain providers, the uh, pricing structure, uh, you know, kind of force you to do that. I've seen that quite a lot, especially with uh, Datadog because uh, their pricing for Lambda is by the you know, per function. So things like $5 per function. So if you got uh, lots of functions, then the, it's going to get really expensive. And I guess usually it comes down to, okay, either switch providers uh, or you, you know, basically do a fair function instead of a single purpose functions. And I guess depending on whether or not the person writing the Lambda function is also the one that's uh, you know, choosing the provider, you may have to just go down the route of having a fair function because uh, you know, you have, you're stuck with a data dog. So what can you do? You know, you don't want to incur a massive uh, bill just because you have, uh, you know, just because you you, you decide to have uh, uh, more granular lambda functions. So that I totally understand. Um, I guess I'm not that familiar with uh, Python, so I guess no, I'll trust you uh, with uh, uh, with what you just said there. Um, but uh, in that case, uh, do you also see people? Because uh, I guess in my interaction with a lot of communities. Some of them have a pretty strong opinions, uh, I guess myself included in terms of, uh, okay, um, single purpose functions should be the default. Do you have, uh, you know, so if you're starting with a greenfield project, uh, do you have any preference uh, to lean one way or the other nowadays? I, nowadays I changed. Um, so I would always start with a fat function to begin with, mostly because I'm still trying to define the same way that when people start with microservices, oftentimes what they get wrong is because they haven't got the boundaries right. So I would start with the fat function first, just so I'm trying to organize these ideas and and what the views are and all the operations, what's shared code, what's actually not really should be a shared code. And then as I progress, I will start to break that down, especially when, when, when we're looking at how much of a security privilege that function actually has. So I will start breaking, use that as a north, uh, I would say. But I usually start with the, the fat function and then start breaking as I need. But the reason I say this is a fat function and such is there's a great element on this cognitive load on the people on the team and as these people change and how much time you have to spend to onboard people with all the toolings and all these separations and such which can take some time okay that's really interesting that's actually uh quite probably the opposite of uh, of my flow <laughs> I, start, yeah. I start with a lot of api design first and then uh, uh and then uh, I, I have individual functions to do those and only uh, when I have to, for some reason, uh, then I start to uh, uh, aggregate things together. 